We want to be able to work with exponents. We will be doing that frequently throughout the rest of this course. So we're going to review over some properties of exponents. We're going to focus on what an exponent is first. An exponent is repeated multiplication of a particular base. So if I say 2 to the fifth, that means to multiply the base of 2 times itself 5 times. The zero exponent, um, any base raised to the zero power is 1. Okay. A negative exponent rule, that's usually where we get tripped up a little bit. If I have a base raised to a negative exponent, a negative exponent always indica indicates a reciprocal of the base. So for example, if we have 6 to the negative 2 power, that would be 1 over 6 to the positive 2 power. Another way that we can think about this is to think about it as um, bringing this base with its negative exponent down through the fraction bar to the bottom part of the fraction. So you can make exponents positive by moving them up or down through the fraction bar. Fractional exponents, if I have a, a base raised to an exponent that's a fraction, the top part, let's look at part B here, the top value of that exponent um, is the power, and the bottom part of that exponent represents the index of a radical. So if I have a base raised to a fractional exponent, I can take the bottom part of that exponent and make it the index of a radical. So I can either take the root first and then raise it to that power, or I can raise it to that power and then take the root. So for example, if we have 8 to the 2 thirds power, the 3 becomes the index of the radical, and the 2 becomes the power on that base. So it becomes the cube root of 8, which is 2, and then we raise it to the power of 2, and so we get 4. Alright, so let's look at a couple of examples of how we're going to go about dealing with simplifying some of these expressions. So we want to evaluate the following expressions. Here we have 32 to the negative 6 fifths power. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this exponent positive. So I'm going to move the base and its exponent down to the bottom part of the fraction. So I'm going to write this as 1 over 32 to the positive 6 fifths power. Now we have an exponent that's a fraction. So I'm going to rewrite 32 to the 6 fifths power. I'm going to take the 5 and I'm going to write that as the index of a radical. And the base goes inside the radical. And then after I do that, I'm going to raise that to the power of 6. Alright, so we end up getting what? Well, the fifth root of 32, you can put that into your calculator, but the fifth root of 32 is 2. Now we have 2 to the power of 6, which is 64. And once again, you can put that into your calculator. So we can simplify that by first making the exponent positive and then converting it to a radical. Alright, so for the next example, we have a negative base. For the negative base, we don't flip anything. Um, One-third, that's a positive exponent. The only time that we flip the base is if the exponent is negative. But since the exponent is positive, all I have to do is rewrite this fractional exponent using radicals. 3 is the index, so we take the denominator of that exponent and make it the index. And I'm going to raise this whole thing to the power of 1. And what's going to go underneath is the base that was originally used for that exponent of one-third. So we're taking the cube root of negative 64 over 27, and then we're going to raise that to the power of 1. Of course, you can put this into your calculator, and we get negative 4 divided by 3. Now, we see... A different, a little bit different setup here. We have a fraction. Notice this time that the base itself is a positive fraction, but it's being raised to a negative exponent. So since the exponent is negative, then I'm going to work with the reciprocal of the base, and then we're going to raise this to the positive one half power. 
So if we have a negative exponent, we can work with the reciprocal of the base and change the exponent to be positive. All right, and the two, of course, becomes the index of a radical. So we're gonna change this fractional exponent into a radical. So that becomes the square root of 16 over nine, and then raising it all to the power of one, which of course we know that doesn't change anything. So our answer for this one will be the square root of 16, which is four, square root of nine, which is three. So we get four thirds. Okay, now the last one here, we're looking at taking the cube root of eight to the ninth power. The easiest way to simplify this, of course, would not be to take eight and raise it to the ninth power. Even if you put that into your calculator, you're gonna get a very big number. So what I would suggest for this problem that we do is we take the three that's represented as the index of this radical, and let's go ahead and rewrite that three as an exponent. So the index becomes the denominator of a fractional exponent. So now we have eight to the ninth power, and then all of that is raised to the one third power. And we know that when we have a power raised to a power, we can multiply those exponents together. So what we actually get, and let's go ahead and write that as um, nine over one. When I multiply fractions, we just multiply across. So that would be nine over three. And of course we know that's nine divided by three is three. So we actually get eight to the third power. And that's a lot simpler to put into our calculator. And we get 512. Something else we want to be able to do is to be able to rewrite with positive exponents only. So we should be able to go from positive exponents to negative if we wish, or negative exponents to positive if we wish. So let's look at a couple different ways we can go about doing these. So here it says to rewrite the expression using positive exponents only and then simplify. So our first step is to rewrite with positive exponents only. All right, so for this problem here, um, we're looking for the negative exponent. And of course, this negative exponent only applies to the base directly in front of it. So we're gonna leave all of this alone, just like it is, and we're gonna bring this to the bottom part of the fraction. So we're gonna write this as s to the positive 10 thirds power. Now when we have like bases, and so we have three times s to the 1 third power divided by s to the 10 thirds power, when we have like bases, uh, we can subtract the exponents. We want to keep the exponents positive, so we're going to do larger exponent minus the smaller exponent. So we're going to leave the three as is. We're going to keep the same base. We're going to do 10 thirds minus one third. So we're going to keep the same base of s, and we're going to subtract larger exponent minus the smaller. The answer always goes where the larger exponent was. So we get three over s to the 9 thirds power, so we just subtract those fractions, and of course we could simplify that a little further, um, 9 divided by 3 is of course 3. So we get 3 divided by s to the third power. Alright, so for our next example we have the square root of x to the negative 1 power, and then we're multiplying that by the square root of 9, um, times x to the negative third power. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make my exponents positive. The exponents only apply to what's directly in front of them. So this is gonna become square root of one over x. So we're working with the reciprocal of x there to the positive one power. And then this, the negative three exponent only applies to what's directly in front of it, so it only applies to the x. What that means is that the nine is gonna stay on top as is, and the x to the positive three power now will come to the bottom. All right, we're gonna simplify now that all of our exponents are positive. We're going to multiply the two square roots together. So when we multiply square roots, as long as they're both an index of two, we can multiply just whatever's underneath the first one times whatever is underneath the second one. So I'm gonna multiply across. So one times nine, it's nine. X times x to the third gives us x to the fourth. And then of course we can simplify by taking the square root of nine, which is three, and the square root of x to the fourth, which is x squared. The last one is a little easier than it looks. 
Uh, we have a couple of things going on. First of all, we have 12 to the 0 power. Remember the 0, the exponent only applies to what's directly in front of it. So 12 to the 0 power, well, we know that any base raised to the 0 power is 1. All right, so this is what we have now. Uh, which, of course, really just leaves us with 1 times something, and 1 times something is always the other something. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the 1. Now, this negative exponent applies to this entire group. So if I go to make this positive, I'm going to move this whole group to the bottom of the fraction. So it becomes 1 over s plus t. So notice the base itself does not change, but the exponent on that group will change to become a positive 3. So that's just some of our rules for exponents that we will need to know as we go through the rest of the course.